from JBS Studios in Greater New York. This is the JBS News Update with Tisha Bader. I'm Tisha Bader with the JBS News Update for Friday, July the 19th, 2019. The United States yesterday imposed sanctions on a senior operative of terror group Hezbollah, believed to have masterminded the deadly attack 25 years ago on the Jewish center in Buenos Aires that left 85 people dead. On the anniversary of the deadly bombing, the U.S. Treasury Department issued sanctions and froze all assets of Salman Rauf Salman. The government also issued a $7 million reward for information leading to Salman's capture. As we reported to you yesterday, Argentina designated Hezbollah as a terror group, freezing assets as well, a move that was welcomed by Israel and the United States, among others. The leaders of the Conference of Presidents of major American Jewish organizations, Arthur Stark and Malcolm Holmline, said of Argentina's action, they hope that other countries in South America and around the world will follow their outstanding example. American Jewish Committee Director of Latino and Latin American Affairs, Dina Siegel Van, who was in Buenos Aires for the anniversary events yesterday, said it was a positive step on the long and winding path to justice for the AMIA bombing victims and their families. And Bahrain lauded Argentina's designation as well. The Gulf Kingdom's foreign ministry called it a new step towards the international community's recognition of the danger of this terrorist group to international peace and security. And the foreign minister of Bahrain met this week on the sidelines of the U.S. State Department's Ministerial to Advance Religious Freedom in Washington with Israel's foreign minister. Israel Katz and Khalid Ben Ahmed Al Khalifa posed for a rare photograph posted on Twitter yesterday by U.S. Middle East envoy Jason Greenblatt, who lauded the friendly exchange as a sign of progress in the region. And yesterday marked the anniversary of another deadly terror attack, also believed to have been carried out by Hezbollah, the bombing of a bus filled with Israeli tourists in the coastal Bulgarian town of Borgas on July the 18th of 2012. Five Israelis and their driver were killed. A year after the attack on European soil, the European Union designated the military, not political wing of Hezbollah as a terror group. Recent calls from Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and others demand that the EU designate Hezbollah in its entirety as a terrorist organization. Well, Israel said it will not block American members of Congress who support BDS, the Boycott, Divestment and Sanctions campaign, which seeks to delegitimize the state of Israel, from entering the country. As we reported to you, Minnesota Representative Ilan Omar, who this week proposed a resolution protecting BDS, said she would visit Israel and the Palestinian Authority in a few weeks, together with Michigan Representative Rashida Tlaib. And there were reports that Israel could prevent them from entering under a law that the state can prohibit any foreigner from entering the country who knowingly issues a public call for boycotting Israel. But today, Israel's ambassador to the U.S., Ron Dermer, told the Times of Israel, out of respect for the U.S. Congress and the great alliance between Israel and America, we would not deny entry to any member of Congress into Israel. On Wednesday, the House Foreign Affairs Committee passed their resolution against BDS, House Resolution 246, which also calls for increased security aid to Israel and a two-state solution, will now head to the House floor. CEO of the Anti-Defamation League, Jonathan Greenblatt, said we are pleased that the vast majority of lawmakers on both sides of the aisle are affirming their opposition to efforts to delegitimize Israel, especially the boycott movement targeting Israel, while supporting a pathway to peace. Greenblatt said this constitutionally sound resolution protects the right to speak out freely against BDS while not impinging on the free speech rights of those with other views. Israel's Labor Party is partnering with the Gesher Party ahead of Israel's upcoming elections in September. Gesher leader Orly Levi Abekasis is thought of as more to the right, as she was previously a member of Knesset with the right-wing Yisrael Beitenu, before breaking off to form Gesher. But she is also known for her focus on social issues, which Labor Chair Amir Peretz noted during a press conference announcing the merger yesterday. Levi Abekasis said when the offer came from Amir, it felt natural 
natural to me to bring down the walls and look at what unifies and connects us. It's time, she said, we let go of the terms right and left and come together for the good of the country. Meanwhile, Ynet reports that former Foreign Minister Sippy Livni turned down an offer from Peretz to join Labor and also rejected an offer from former Prime Minister Ehud Barak to join his Israel Democratic Party. Well, a vest designed by an Israeli company is heading to space, protecting NASA astronauts from the dangers of extreme radiation. STEMRAD founder Oren Milstein explained the life-saving AstroRad vest. STEMRAD is really the first company to enable protection of human beings from ionizing radiation. With Lockheed Martin and the Israeli Space Agency, we're enabling deep space exploration by humans and in fulfilling the greatest aspirations of NASA and mankind in getting to the moon and getting to Mars and landing on these very remote destinations. The vest is sponsored by the Israel Space Agency in partnership with Lockheed Martin and is said to launch aboard a resupply mission to the International Space Station in October. The first time the Israeli flag, which is featured on the vest alongside the American flag, will be on the space station. The vest, by the way, will be on display this weekend at the Apollo 50 Festival, celebrating the first moon landing in Washington. Taking a look now at our programming for tonight on JBS for Friday, July the 19th. Shabbat services are coming up at 7 from the Hampton Synagogue, followed by services from Central Synagogue. Then at 9, the JBS Jewish Film Festival presents the award-winning documentary Beyond Eruv, followed by Musica at 10.30. And coming up right after this newscast, a look at prayer and intimacy and a look at this week's Torah portion. And that's the JBS News Update for Friday, July the 19th, 2019. I'm Tisha Shabbat Shalom.